The sound of the final buzzer means it's hangover time. So grab a drink and join your host, Alphonse Sidney, for a Miami Heat Beat post game show. We won! The Heat won! We won a game! I mean, it's been 84 years. I can't believe it. Like, this is amazing. Not to not not only do they win, they stop the dog shit out of a team that they should stop the dog shit out of. Because, I mean, this is what Eastern Conference champions should be doing in the following season. Um, they held uh, they held Bradley Beal in check. Uh, the stars played like stars. Um, you know, you know Jimmy was out here flirting with a triple double. Bam Adebayo was doing his thing. Uh, you you had the team playing in a way that they're supposed to play. You had guys in the positions they're supposed to be playing in. Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn coming off the bench, uh, exerting their influence over second team players, you know, and being dominant against the other team's bench. Uh, you had Jimmy Bam out here with Kelly Goron. You know, you basically had the playoff starting lineup out here, and they did their thing. So. The heat, the, the main thing that I saw tonight is that for the first time since they got blown out by 50 by the Bucks and came back and beat the Bucks, even a little bit shorthanded, the Miami Heat showed pride. I have not seen pride in this team in, you know, weeks, to be honest, months, to be honest. Um, so tonight was a really, really strong showing of, hey, this team still has pride. This team is still going to come back and, you know, they're going to they're going to get embarrassed one night and they're going to come back and show something. I still think there's a lot of there's 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 a lot of problems with this roster. And, you know, we saw a bandaid of Goran Dragic and we see, you know, you ask Goran to start play that many heavy minutes. Goran Goran's already hurt. All right, so bring me out, Brass. Let's introduce the rest of the panel. Um, I'm excited tonight, man. It's Friday night. It's time for the drip drop drinking game. We're having a good time. Uh, so, so if you guys don't know how the drip drop drinking game works, for every sub, for every bit donation, we will take a shot. I got my uh, 1800 what? silver tequila here. Solana, what? You don't know what's going on? <laughs> That, Solana, where, where where you been? Where, <laughs> what do you be doing? No, I mean I, I I didn't realize I was I was serious. Like we're we're I have to get I, on top of drinking a fucking hard seltzer. I have to go get something to take a shot of. Also, yeah, you actually need real alcohol tonight. Hey, thanks for uh, watching, man. Solana. Yeah, you make, big, makes big us feel really show, good. I mean, what what are we doing here, man? What are we doing? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Jesus, I should give him a strike already. That's one you, Alf, strike. No, that no, no, that that's one strike. I tell you, Alf, we got we already got some subs, man. We're on level five hype train right now. We got Jordan Wade subscribe at tier one. We have Eric the Great gifted ten up, tier one subs. Whoa, Eric! So we that's got the ten, Riley Wilson so, subscribe at Prime. Uh, so wait, that's what thir that's 13, 12, 14. Uh, wait, he did another one. Let's see. So 10. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. This is. We got some shots Three, to take, y'all, tonight. 11. It's Friday night, so tapioca stop. tapioca gifted 10. Holy shit. So we oh got, what, God. 22 shots to take? Key key gifted Need five. Oh, my God. 27. Is... Guys. 20, it's like 27, 28 at this point. I'm barely recovered from the last one. Shit. I'm just letting you know that. All right. So we don't have Moose here. So, Brass. You're the one. We're gonna do. Well, I'll wait for these guys to get back. Are, are we doing I'm gonna do the first one, Brass. Why, call why it we out. Do what, what we're what we're drinking. Are we gonna talk about what we're? Oh drinking? well, no. Just call one out real quick so we can knock one out. Call it out. Okay. Okay. Hang on. I got. I gotta get mine ready. Jeez, <laughs> got me all flustered, man. I'm not used to these. Wheels. I would just say I would just do it myself. But if you want to yeah. join in with me, let's go. No, it's all. No, it's all good. I got this. Okay. Hit uh, us with the. 
Wait, I mean, I got I got to get the, the the image up there. I mean, shit. What are, what are we doing here? Oh my god. We got to hit him up with that drip drop. <laughs> oh no. Let's motherfucking go. The heat won. It's a heat win. Like, come on. Like, usually we're out here trying to cheer people up after a really bad loss. Yeah. So, like, we're doing, you know, our job is halfway done. People are in a fucking good mood, which is probably why we're about to take 30 shots tonight. Um, but I think we got two off the books right there. Uh, Brass, uh, intrepid producer, what are you drinking tonight? I am drinking. So, I for my shots, I got my uh, Crystal Head Vodka out here. Beautiful. Uh, with my little Crystal Head Vodka shot glass. It's kind of cool. And But I'm drinking a, a drink. I made a cocktail called a Talent Scout. Because we got a lot of talent out there <laughs> on this team. No, we don't. Apparently. No, no. But hey, <laughs> shut the fuck up. We want to train them as a team. Hey, come on. We gotta... What are you doing? No, we don't. Come on. No, man. we don't. Uh, Stacy. The, 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 the team that almost uh, gave up a 30 point lead in the fourth quarter is a team we've been trotting out <laughs> uh, for a lot of minutes. Like, some of those five man rosters we've been depending on to hold leads. Rip drop. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh my god, I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. Tonight. I don't think Solana's coming back. Look at him. He's just he's just oh, like I'm not goes. doing I'm not doing it. I'm not drinking. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be on tonight, but we won. We're playing drip drop. Let's go. Let's celebrate. Good man. Good man. All right, let's let's take it around the horn like we normally do about this time. Uh, Tiffany Meeks, my yes. right hand. What are you drinking tonight? So I have um, Tito's in a solo cup because I don't have a kitchen right now. So that's all I got, and some Corona. That's it. So wait, are, do you not have a kitchen because you're in like a moose situation where like? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're you're broke, or is it? Is there a real? Is there a good reason you don't have a kitchen? <laughs> it's being remodeled, so I don't. I, like, oh, yeah, mine too, <laughs> Tiff. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> we know Guys, Tiff got money. We, yeah, it's, <laughs> not, it's not a moose situation. Sheila K twenty three gifted ten Ooh. tier one subs. Oh, fucking a. Uh, it's uh, hot. Brad, hit us again. <laughs> Let's do it around the horn. Wait, 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 maybe maybe Moose should do it since he's here. Yes. Oh so shit! Time yes. for the win. Drip trap. Is that everyone again? God. No, that's Moose. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who was it on? I don't know. I took a shot, anyways. I feel like we've got. So we're up to like twelve. I think we're rolling. I think we're catching yeah. up. Gonna keep, keep taking we've done at least eight. <laughs> Siobhan, what are you drinking tonight? I got. Jack Rye and cranberry and shots of um, Jose. No candle. No Wait. candle tonight. It's in the cellar. No, we're partying it's in after the... when? Now you're going hard. Let's go. Let's do it. I don't know if I have any. Sure. No, we're good. We're good. Two is enough. I mean, you, don't need, I, 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 you, you don't need the triple. You have enough alcohol. Come on, hold back. Come on, hold back. <laughs> just come on, back. Okay. No, I would swap one out. So we apparently have. You I'm good? Just you we good? Have, we have a total of forty-eight <laughs> gifted subs tonight. Total shit, from, and that's from yeah, three people. So that's eight shots each at this point. Um, yeah, and if Solana ever comes back, he he might cut he into that. Back. Where did he go? <laughs> he he ran. <laughs> he just ran. <laughs> <laughs> he heard we were playing drip drop. He was like, ah, I'm gonna sit this one out. Yeah, we're on yeah. Solana watch. No, Jack Alfonso, like the host milk of cow or something. Shot milk. Not host of the pregame show. I gotta say, I got kicked off the pregame show today. Really pissed me off. Oh, man. What um, happened? Why'd you get kicked cool. off the pregame show? Um, Mr. Navas, our boss, um, <laughs> he got pretty mad at me for something I said, and he kicked me off. And then classic Navas move, couldn't find a way to bring me back on. <laughs> bullshit. Me and Tiff are buddies today. I've got some Tito's. Oh, there you go. You were like midpoint too, Jack. You were in the middle of yeah. like midpoint. And I'm honestly glad I didn't finish that point. I was thinking about that because I was about to slander Kendrick Nunn so hard. I was going to say You still could have. Spo said something about like <laughs> how this is an opportunity for Nunn to step up and I was about to say like 
how many opportunities does he fucking need? Like he's not gonna step up. <laughs> and then I got then cut he off. Drops twenty five tonight, eleven for yeah. seventeen. Love it, <laughs> love it. Leaves it. <laughs> the Dark Knight leads a team in minutes plus my. Oh no, he didn't lead him plus minus. The dark leads a team scores. in minutes scoring. I mean, the Dark Knight rose up today. The di- Dark hey, Knight rose Solana's up. Back. Oh, Solana. Solana. <laughs> yeah, we- uh, Moose, what are you drinking tonight? As always, staying on brand with the monkey shoulder. It's almost Bro, gone too. So let, let's see if we finish it tonight. I feel like you're the only person who buys that shit. <laughs> Probably. Somebody's got to keep them in business. You know what I'm saying? I was gifted yeah. a bottle of that in Cyprus. There you go. Yeah. And I almost what did you a racist do? way. She re gifted <laughs> it. <laughs> it was racist, right? <laughs> I wasn't sure or not. It was racist. I didn't know Greek. We were talking about Secret Santa gifts. She drew my name and it was something, 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 monkey, something, something. And I didn't oh, say yeah. anything. I just was like, hmm. But I, maybe she felt me. And then after practice, she came over and was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I hope you didn't think anything. Mm. It's an alcohol. Look, no, it's a liquor. See, it's a. It she like, knew. Oh, okay. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> that ain't right. Felt it. No, it's good though. You 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 give me monkey anything. I had a I had a girlfriend who worked at a uh uh some job, some office job, and they had like a banana uh of the month award. I say it's like they gave you a stuffed banana. I don't know where the banana came from, but the first time they gave that to a black person, it was like who thought of this marketing idea? Like, it's just fucking terrible. Just like just like gifting a black person monkey shoulder. Like <laughs> not the best fucking idea. Not during Black History Month, especially. Uh Solana. Solana during that awkward um transition. Uh, tangent. Yeah, what are you drinking tonight? I've got uh a funky Buddha pink grapefruit crisp hard seltzer. And it is absolutely delicious. What, it goes perfect with your Doug Funny costume. <laughs> it's, it's Friday. It's casual, casual Friday. Casual Friday. I don't, I don't even know whether to give him a strike for that because it's just expected at this point. Like I'm just. What's, what, what's what, what is he what's shooting? Wrong? Yeah. What are what you, are you what, shooting? What did you What did you leave for like ten minutes for? What did I leave for ten minutes? Yeah, you, for? Lo- you left for like ten minutes when you t- when you heard we're getting shots. What, so what are you shooting? Oh, what am I shooting? No, he what went to the mirror to himself up. <laughs> oh, look, real liquor! Hey. Oh, did you go and oh, steal that? Yeah. What happened? Applause. I actually I have a full liquor cabinet. I just haven't been uh, haven't been using it. So I hate you wow. guys, but thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, hey, Moose, you got to hit him with it. I'm going to hit you one time with a drip drop. Are you, are you, are you going to be that Everybody? obnoxious every time? Yes. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys. There Ooh. was a game tonight. Uh, I like that it takes us 15 minutes to get to this. Um, <laughs> the heat. Tonight? Yeah, apparently. Uh, it took me a while to catch up to it because I went out. I, I, I fully expected them to lose. I went out and about. I did my thing. I did what I had. You know, I, 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 I basically lived my life. And I said, okay, I got the game recorded. I finally caught up in mid third quarter. And I kept expecting this lead to slip away. The lead kept growing and growing and growing. And I was like, holy shit, this is the team I recognize. Like, I haven't recognized this team in a long time, and they they decided to take a team who was weakened by the presence of Russell Westbrook, which I think <laughs> is <laughs> we we really need to talk about. That every time that motherfucker plays, they lose. Kryptonite. Um, yeah. He's playing for us tonight. He's kryptonite. Yeah. <laughs> they they went out there, they stepped on their necks, and you know, they 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 took care of business tonight. So Tiff, I mean, there's a lot of guys who had good games tonight, and but overall, what did you see from the Heat? 
Um, I mean, it looks like it, it was a, a team effort. It looks like everybody came in, did their job, and, and that was it. But I do love the fact that, you know, um, uh, Moose's boy came off the pine because I think that's where he's most comfortable. He doesn't have you know, to be preach. the lead guard. He doesn't have preach. to. He doesn't have to try to set people up. He can just find his game, and and then let the rest of the game come to him. I think that's probably what's going to be most important about Tyler going forward. Um, but Tiff and and I I'll, I will redirect this to to Siobhan afterwards. Part of Tyler being able to come off the bench is that you're able to start Goran Dragic. And we have said repeatedly on this yeah. show that Tyler Hero is not a starting point guard, and you cannot continue to count right. on Goran Dragic for heavy minutes. Right. And look what happens tonight. Goran Dragic gets injured. So all the momentum of tonight, Tyler coming off the bench, Kendrick <clears throat> Nunn, these guys playing against second units, even Precious right. Achua, who looked really good in in, in in certain minutes, like these guys that play well against other second units, everything shifts once Goran's out of the lineup and you have to bring Tyler back into the starting unit. So, um, Jack, is is tonight an anomaly if Goran misses three, four, five, mm-hmm. six of the next games? Um, I mean, they definitely need Goran out there, so that would definitely kill them. But I don't think it was – all Goron that changed this. I mean, Kelly hit shots. That's, I think, one of the biggest changes. None hit shots. Guys that just haven't been hitting shots started hitting shots, and that's, like, kind of what I want to see going forward because I think it's really easy for them to make one big win, but they're, like, seven, now six games under 500. They really need to get on a roll. But nobody played over 30 minutes except Kendrick Nunn, which I think is, like, really cool for them. So you can't really make the – I don't know if you can make the heavy arguments – the heavy minutes argument for Goron. Like, I know they can't rely on him too heavily, but it does kind of seem like, you know, this was going to happen either way. Well, I think what – I think my point is 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 the fact that you are – you're bringing Goron into the starting lineup, and it, it, what it does is it, it puts guys that need to be on the bench on the bench. And I don't think that is a recipe for future success. As as excited as I am about tonight's win, Siobhan, is this, like I say, is this a recipe for future success or is this a one-off? Or do you see like, you know, I, I see a lot of guys like Will Manso, Clay Ferraro, me, uh, talking about that there's going to be a seven, eight game win streak coming in soon. Or is this a blip mm-hmm. on the radar and we're about to go back to, you know, to to drinking our pain away the next uh, few nights? <laughs> uh, I, I think at best you kind of hope that it's a little bit of both. Um, I think, Jack, you guys talked about in the pregame a little bit what their schedule looks like coming up. Right. And so I think it's like a couple should be, you know, winnable games. And then after that is a slate of like four or five, you know, tough. I think it's a fairly uh, Western laden schedule. And so, um, you know, truthfully, no, you know, Goran Goran starting this early in the season isn't a recipe, isn't a long term recipe for success for this team. Um, Jack, in the pregame, you guys said also that like um, moving him to the starting lineup this early is a all right, balls on the table. Like this is a this is a, a must win type of situation, and um, and 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 Avery's out also, and so now you have a, a game of you know things clicking, things being in place. Um, Tyler being more freed, and and even Duncan and the other guys in this starting lineup, I think being more freed by there being you know clear delineations of roles with fewer roles on the on the on the floor at once. Um and so I mean I guess you you hope that you know the confidence rolls over, right? You hope that, you know, guys haven't seen the ball go through the hoop rolls over. But um schematically, I don't know that that changes because we go right back to who do we have now running point and then does the lineup go back to, you know, what it has been um prior to bringing Goran off the off the bench and starting. I'd like to mm-hmm. piggyback up uh, some of that. Like, you know, we're, we're talking about some of the players who haven't hit shots and they kind of got hot tonight. And it's kind of amazing, right? What the confidence that you get after a 30 point lead. So right. 
I don't really, I don't right. really know if we can, you can't depend on this night after right. night. Um, right. and obviously depending on how much time Goran misses, that's gonna, it's gonna hurt. Um, but also let's not forget the fact the wizards have won five games this year. Right. Yes. yes. You be the bad right. of them. Right. The worst yes. right? They're the a NBA. bad team. They're a really, really, really bad right. team. Okay. With a couple well, guys what? who can go ham on offense. You beat a bad team making urgent moves. Right, right. right. Exactly. And that's what concerns me. You know, starting Goron is, you know, was your was your ace in the hole for the playoffs last year. You had to go to that to beat the Wizards. Yeah. <laughs> you know what that, I mean? That means don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe because that's <laughs> what this is. Um, yeah. Moose. What one thing I saw, they went to the rim in the first half repeatedly, and then somehow, for some strange reason, they went in at halftime and then continued to attack the rim, which is wild. It's crazy. To me. It's crazy. I mean, what a wild fucking concept! It's like, like the they decided was, to stick with what was working. I mean, <laughs> insane, <laughs> insane. Like, it was it like some stroke of genius by Spo? Like, what happened tonight? Did UD yell at everyone? Like, everyone was I mean, saying, oh, UD's going to get mad? Listen, I said it on the last pod. UD earned his money. He had to have a players-only meeting and get into everyone's <laughs> ass and, and chop it up and tell him, like, look, if this is what you guys are going to be doing all year long, then don't expect to make the playoffs. Why did you know? it take him 21 fucking games to do that? <laughs> Bro, he's been dealing with COVID. He's like 100 years old. He's trying to stay alive. Chill. It's a pandemic. <laughs> But I mean, that, that's kind of a problem, like with urgency, yeah. right? If, right. Yeah, if totally. you need a UD moment yeah, right. to beat the worst defense in the NBA, a team with five wins, like yeah. what are you fucking doing with your life? Totally. Like, get your shit together. This should be an easy win. This should not be a triumphant like right. thing. Right. That right. Two of their five wins against us, aren't we like two and four? <laughs> right. I, I totally agree. Brutal. I yeah. totally agree. And the thing that Shaban said that I really want to piggyback off of is starting Dragic, that's a break glass in case yeah. of an emergency situation. Yeah. And, literally, and literally it broke because didn't he leave injured? <laughs> injured. Yeah, yeah. He and that's, and that's the so, thing I was going to get to now that I hope they don't move Tyler back into that starting point guard role. And, and I've been saying it from the jump, he's not a starting point guard. Who do you he's not a starter. Out. He's not Avery's a starter. Okay, let, me, let me ask a lot. First of all, Moose, hit us with a drip By the drop. way, drip drop. <laughs> Oh my god, this is not gonna be fun. Solana. Um <laughs> what going forward, if Goron's out, that injury didn't look great. You know what I mean? What you know, you 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 solved the you solved the issue for one night. Um well, part of solving the issue well, was I, Kelly I going five for seven. The seven face that three. he just made uh, when he took a shot. Have you have you never taken a shot before, Solana? Uh I don't not, know if you guys saw that face. Not since March. Wait, what happened? No. Oh my god! Like he was just like, okay, I'm gonna take a shot. Ooh, ooh, it burns the lips. I don't know. It, it was... it's the, uh, that's the first shot I take since March 20. Brass, like, like Solana, March 20, you need to take 20. There, uh, Moose called out. Solana needs to take another shot. One time for Doug Funny on the left drip drop. <laughs> What's up, we're watching. We're watching. We're watching. We're we're not even talking about that. There we go. Is that good? Is that better? Was that, that was, was way that a, better? Yeah. Was that a, a better shot experience for you, Brass? You look like an adult. Do you, do you approve? It was a normal shot experience. It was fine. Right. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm glad. No, no. Time. I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad I, I took a shot that was to your liking. Really, I, I'm, I'm I'm very happy. Very happy. <laughs> You look like an extra from a 90s college frat movie. <laughs> I didn't realize wearing a fucking sweater was was the like, crime what is of that the sweater century. though? Like what's happening? It's sweater. It's 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 fucking fake Ralph Lauren. It's a sweater. It's a sweater. Oh, that's that's You're like that a stand-in for Ralph like Lauren. one of Stifler's friends. <laughs> yeah, right? You didn't have to say it was fake either. We can't see the logo, bro. <laughs> it might it actually might be fake. Might the be horse fake. is the wrong way. <laughs> The club is up. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, you look like a bad American Pie bootleg from China. Somebody, um, somebody said I look like I, I'm, I'm an old Navy model, which, <laughs> which is yeah. actually very on point. 
It's that a wave in the comb over. It's Aw, <laughs> like it. but don't. There's nothing wrong no, with no. this. No, no. <laughs> I love it. Now, now it's just like uh, like anything. So I was like, that was <laughs> <perfect>. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of serious basketball question. Uh, um, I can't wait. No, I can't wait. Yeah, let's hear it. If Goran Dragic is hurt, what's the answer going forward at point guard? I mean, I think it's it's cool for uh, for Moose to say he's not a point guard and like, yeah, dude, that guy's starting on uh, in New York. Like, there, there's no doubt about it. On Sunday, he's starting. So I mean, you think Tyler's you know, back in the starting yeah, lineup? Yeah, I mean, come on, what are we doing? Yeah, he's and and maybe it's none. Like maybe I'm it's going none, with none. I think maybe, I think none earned it tonight. Yeah. Maybe he earned it tonight, but I, I think it's uh we have a large enough sample size to understand the roller coaster ride that is Kendrick Nunn, right? Like and yeah, he earned it tonight, but he's that. lost it over the last year and a half. <laughs> yeah, Eric like, Spolster understands this... that, and and can none can none contain that? Can he be consistent? No. So I, I think I think it's inevitable. Tyler makes his way back into the starting lineup, and and like we're just gonna have to get used to that. But don't act like Tyler ain't have us on bumper cars either. Come no, on. no. Like sure. let's not act like he wasn't out there on skates for most of the season. Yeah. No, I'm I'm not I'm not even praising Tyler Hero. I just know that it's inevitable because Spose kind of showed us that none has a short leash, Tyler doesn't. Well, I, I will say there's not a single guy on the team that has proven right um <laughs> to, that he that he deserves consistent minutes outside of Bam Adebayo. And Jimmy Butler, like these, these are the only guys. And even, I mean, Bam scored twenty-one tonight. I mean, he had like fifteen in the first quarter, and I think he kind of put the game away. And they, and they just they rolled with it. Um, but those are the only two guys that like have proven that Lionel Linick had a nice game tonight. But like, who here expects Kelly Olynyk to repeat this performance against the, no. the New York Knicks on Sunday? No, no, it's not happening. I mean, he may not repeat it. I think the hope is that he's out of the slump and then he kind of returns to what he was last year or something. But even then, I... I, Like, give me four for nine. Give me four for nine. Yeah. (laughs) They just need him to be a threat. He's been really bad this year, and they just need him to be normal Kelly Olenek, like, which is not asking much, but he's been so not that. He's been rough. Yeah, we just just can't go through another one for nine, two for ten... Uh, the kind of performance like Duncan Robinson tonight. I mean, he was a plus twenty two on on the floors. He only scored six points. I I, I don't. The thing with Duncan to me, uh, Tiff, and I know you you're hard on Duncan. I think we all are hard on Duncan. Um, but him out there, he is still leading the team in net rating for the year because when he's out there. The other team has to put a Rui Hachimura or whatever on him. Like they have to put one of their best defenders on him the entire game because they're afraid of him going off and it creates things for other guys. So even when Duncan has a bad game, like he's still super valuable to this offense. I mean, first of all, I don't believe in numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so the what net you, ratings and this, that, what are you, and the Marjorie other. Taylor Green. What are you talking about? You don't believe in numbers. <laughs> oh shit! I don't believe in numbers because the thing is, guess what? He can do that same thing he just did tonight. He can do it versus the Knicks, and they lose because sometimes those little things matter. He don't do the little things, and at some point, we can't keep saying, "Oh, he's gonna get better." He's damn near thirty. What is he? Twenty five. Let's stop acting like Tip he's a spring about, chicken. Tip talk about this whole, this man's entire life. Like, right, but we got to at some point be like, oh, you can't throw an accurate bounce pass. Like, there's just certain things he doesn't cut well. Like, oh, come, come on. on. If he cuts. Who is I he? said, well. You're talking about Duncan. He's a good cutter. I think so. There's a couple times he got into the middle of the defense tonight. A couple made, of... But you talking about hockey. tonight? I I'm know, talking about he overall. System basis. He makes the hockey assist. He uses the gravity to his advantage. Whether he's hitting the shot or not, I feel like he's an asset to the offense. And, I really do. And and he is when he is. But more often than not, this team needs more. Like at some point, we do have to say, yeah, he's a great shooter. But at some point, we got to look at the team as a whole and say, oh. 
we're missing this, this, and this. Um, Jack, one of the things I saw tonight, um, because I'm not going to keep arguing with Tiffany about Duncan Robinson. <laughs> Every night um, you do. Every I, night. I, 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 I agree with, I, I, I disagree with you on his impact, but I, I disagree. Uh, what are we? Everyone's pointing so, down. Solana wanted to respond. I mean, it's, I don't have to. Like, oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna Did get you roasted. raise your hand or something. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Honestly, I'm, I'm fucking in, in high school or something. Like that. because of your drink choices, I forget you're here sometimes. <laughs> Juvenile drink choices. Mr. Sydney, Mr. Sydney. Yeah, go I, ahead. I just, I just think it's, it's, it's so early in his development. Like, I get it. Okay, he's 25, and yes, he's been on the team for two seasons. He had one good year last year. Okay, Wait, who are we talking about? Duncan. <laughs> Hey, no, he's, he, I mean, early in his development. Right. That's why, but see, y'all well, want to argue is. with me, but look at, he, he but, just, he just gave me what I just gave you he, early in his development. He he's almost third, 30. That's not it's his early third in the NBA season. Okay. It's his third NBA season. Duncan Robinson has been asked his entire career since he's gotten to the G League, since he's been in this development process with the Miami Heat to be one dimensional, shoot threes, be amazing at shooting threes. That's what he was asked to do. That's what he became amazing at. That's what last season he showed us he can do at another level. He had a historic season doing it. Now, because he's being asked to fill a bigger role, he's struggling. I'm not saying he's bereft of criticism. He needs, he needs to get better in all facets of the game. But he got to a certain level, an elite level, by doing what he was asked to do his entire career. Now he has to evolve, and I'm not willing through 22 games – to, to say, oh, he can't do anything right other than shoot threes because that's not true. And I still think there's more to Duncan Robinson than we're seeing. And this season specifically well, probably isn't the right sample size and, and the right situation considering how many games all of our best players have missed to immediately say, that's it on Duncan Robinson. Like, I think there's more to Duncan Robinson and it, it, it would be silly. And I'm with you on the, on the salary. If we don't want to pay him $20 million a year, fine, trade him, whatever. But to say Duncan Robinson's one dimensional and that's it, he's never going to be anything better, I, I don't think it's fair. Listen, I think Listen. you guys both make some great points, but I think what Wait. we really need to remember is that it's Friday night. So, drip drop! Thank you, Moose. We had to break some of that up. <laughs> like, because I because everybody getting um, their feelings hurt about Duncan. Okay, I'm not, here's, I don't here's, care here's, about Duncan. Yeah, but, I just, well, I, I no, just, but I think, I think it's something we, you know, need to touch on a little bit because the reason that we're talking about trading Duncan is because Duncan is going to get a lot of fucking money and that's sure, fair. has <laughs> he been asked has he been asked you know to basically be a you know one dimensional player yeah probably although I'm surprised in this organization to really be asked to be a specifically a one dimensional player you know I, I just I think we've probably seen the height of his defense if we're being real but he's going to get a lot of money and with what his output i i'm just saying it's a it's a it's a question man it's they've it's, got it's 10 games in front of them man they've got 10 games in front of them that they need to win i think with no point guard but if they don't do well in those 10 games i think that's when you open yeah. up the trade machine but they're coming off a win it's a must win i think maybe like i'm not putting the chance above 50% but I think like this could be some kind of turnaround. Jimmy looked really good. I think Bam was making quick decisions, and I do think that like sets everything up for everybody else. I do think that's a large reason like why Kelly looked better. I don't think he's going to shoot like this in the future, but I do think the fact that Jimmy and Bam were both being really aggressive and not hesitant, which is the big thing with Bam, he was making quick decisions even if he was passing. I do think that makes the offense, even though there are, are flaws on this team, and I do think there are big questions, I, I think that solves a ton of their issues is their stars playing like stars. But also speaking so. of Bam, Bam this, if, at the end of the first quarter, he, had a, he was 11 for 11 from the free throw line, and that's an NBA record this year. Yeah. Be the best in the NBA this year. I mean, that's that's great. That means he's active, he's driving, he's doing the things we that's want him to do. I so, I mean, that's awesome. Right. He could do that every night. And he that's could. all I've been saying. He, he can do that. He he has the skill yeah, set. Yeah, because he attacked the guys that were in front of him. 
mm-hmm. a bunch of fucking bums. Like, like, let's go. <laughs> like, you know, it, it, let's. It's Alex Len and Robin Lopez and Rui Hachimura. Like, yep. get. Like, you are a max player. Go get the. I mean, get these dudes in foul trouble. Like, and it was beautiful to see. And Jack, I, I, I see where you're coming from, and I see where Tiff is coming from, and like. Part of my, I'm somewhere in the middle where, yes, tonight, and I, I'll go to Salon on this. Like, tonight does feel like, okay, maybe it could be a turning point, but your turning point shouldn't have to come against the worst, one of the worst teams right. in the league. Yeah. And that is one of the problems. And it's like, so you, like, until, like, I doubt you until you show me. Like, I gave the Heat so much benefit of doubt this season. And I'm at this point right now. They go up 15. I'm completely expecting them to blow that lead. They go if it went as soon as it goes from 15 to 12, I turn into Mike Inglis. Like, here the heat go, letting it let you know, uh, blowing another lead. Like, I'm completely done with this team. Like, if it when whenever they let a 12 point lead slip to nine. So, my thing is, is, is this Solana a turning point? Or is this just them playing a really shitty team with Russell Westbrook taking a lot of bad shots and taking the ball out of Bradley Beal's hands? Yeah, probably, probably the latter. I also, I, I want to be cautious by calling this a turning point when there's a seven-game West Coast right. gauntlet waiting for the Miami yeah. Heat. And and despite everything that's happened, let's say they had a healthy team throughout the entire season, no COVID issues. That's a effing hard ass schedule right. seven games west coast road trip covid regulations or protocols whatever the fuck you want to call them like that's a that's an insane seven game stretch that they have to go through now you add everything that's happened to this team goron looks like he's probably gonna miss some time avery bradley's still out jimmy might have rolled his ankle again like bro that's tough however i will say if, if they turn around and lose to the knicks in new york on sunday then literally this didn't matter so I, that's why I, I want to be cautious by right. saying this is a tur- uh, what do you call a turning point? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I, we can call it that, yeah. but I said it could be a turning point. I, I'm not even being up to, I'm just saying at a certain point, you got to trust that you have superstars that can yes. I agree. muscle I agree. wins. Yeah. And like, I know this isn't the team that we had last year. It's a lot different in a lot of ways and a lot of small, subtle ways. But I am a believer in the Jimmy Butt. Butler effect. I saw what I saw in the playoffs. I saw what I saw in the finals. If that guy wants you to win, you can win any game. You can beat the Lakers on any given night, especially in the regular season. So, yeah, if they lose to the Knicks, it's fuck it. Trade everybody. <laughs> they have to string two wings wins together before I call it a turnaround. But I'm saying, like... Like five wins before I call have, it a turnaround. You have, to, you have to trust Bam and Jimmy to get you through this gauntlet, like a tough stretch. And if you can't trust them to do that, then I'm not saying I doubt them, but how great are they really? Like- no, okay, Siobhan, and this is one of my things. You want to trust uh, Jimmy and Bam to get you through this gauntlet, right? The problem is you, they the their supporting cast couldn't get them through a fucking mitten. And now we're talking about getting them through a gauntlet. They went through one of the easiest parts of the season, getting fucking uh, ramrodded by shitty ass teams because one of those guys wasn't on the floor. And now you want these two niggas to come in and get you through a gauntlet? Like it is like like Jimmy and Bam aren't it, it like as much as I want them to be. Ad and LeBron, they're not. Ad and LeBron got help. They got help. Bro. Yeah, they ain't playing right the game, Vincent. Do but you believe also... exactly they're not playing Gabe Vincent? Do you believe for a second that Jimmy and Bam have help? I think they have help match up depending, right? But then and we're at the point where that's not good enough. They need to know that they have consistent um kind of you know dogs that are are that are going to play with uh, a certain level of effort and intensity, kind of regardless of of, of shots falling or not. And and I kind of want to touch on what Solana was saying about Duncan a little bit because I feel like you think I'm hard on Duncan too. And I think some of that has to come um, – Spo has to get a little bit of that too, right? Because I feel like for me personally, it's it's harder to ask a, a guy to, you know, maybe add an entire another dimension to his to his repertoire in as short of offseason as they had 
then maybe it is to ask a coach to be more nimble and more creative and, and think of um, some more ways to occupy this dude or to get this dude open while occupying, um, while using what you have still there to, to occupy other defenders. Like we saw Jimmy kind of um, in the low post a little bit, and that's a great place to put him. That's a great place to have him. But we're, we're running, you know, kind of brush flares at the top. And, and I don't know, I just, I, I think that with what we have, um, some of it, but then I don't know, maybe what can, what more can we ask for to do? I don't know. I think we can ask him to be a little more imaginative with his lineup. But again, like you said, we're asking these two dudes to come back and we bet we went what two and four on this like homestead. And we're about to play you know, trash teams, right? Playing trash teams. Everybody that we've played has and had people them, out with COVID or some whatever. We about to go to the West and now you know, get us through the up. gauntlet with no Goran Dragic and, right. and, and no Casey Goran, right. Paula. And the offense resorting back to what it looked like um, without a table setter. But Moose, I need your help right here. Spo we gotta catch up, man. There's yeah. a, there's Spo a ton called of stuff a challenge, here. and I believe that calls for. Oh, One did. time for Spo finally doing what he's meant to do. Drip drop. Drip drop. Also, shout out Twisted Tapioca. I see you sending a bunch of subs. You're not going to kill us Drip tonight. drop member. <laughs> Alf, I got a question for you. I'm waiting for Twisted Tapioca's credit card to get declined. We should, talk about, we should talk about this. This is a great quote from Jimmy. I, I figured Tiff would enjoy that. Uh, Ninja... <laughs> Ninja Red CJ says, Jimmy Butler on Kendrick Nunn possibly earning a free cup of coffee after tonight. He ain't getting no complimentary coffee for me. That's what he's supposed to go out there and do. Absolutely right. And there Facts. needs to be more of that Facts. applied all oh, around. Facts. Come on. Yeah. No, yeah. that's, no. that's Come your on. job. That's, that's your down. job. When you what? show up at Old Navy to fold sweaters, everybody <laughs> expects them creases to be right you know it's, such, it's such a faux tough guy like line though like that's what he's supposed no. to do. Like, no right. you're calling no. jimmy no. butler a no. faux exactly. tough guy no. he's not you don't have to he's be a not. tough guy right. that's a, that's an athlete that's what that's athletes say about I other athletes. This Jimmy is what you're that. here for. Come on. No. I would agree Absolutely. with Lana in normal circumstances, but this is no. the worst defense in the league that he did it against. It is quite literally like what you're lot. supposed to do. You don't get free shit for balling right. up your Smith. Like, right. <laughs> Like I, I might get, I might be a solid, Ooh, I might get Ish a solid Smith two, one, one and two in thirty minutes against Ish Smith. <laughs> right, come on. <laughs> I could hit a layup on Ish Smith. I could body him up. Jimmy's he missed him one time. Right. Like, oh, Jimmy's missed solid. twelve games. He missed twelve games this season. Comes back. We go one and two. We lose a game that we were up ten with three minutes left, and then the other game. Uh, we lose to the Wizards the other night, and then we win a game, and he wants to start acting again, like like he's oh, spewing bro, all the nonsense. Like, no. oh, Brass, get him out of here. Just win, just win. Get get like his shit. ass out of here. <laughs> They've spoken. <laughs> Tim, you said you had a question for me. Yeah, because it is no, rightfully. He... I'm excited because no one ever asked me questions. Right, because I want to know. Because here's the thing. Well, basically for everybody, rightfully so, you know, Jimmy and Bam are playing with, like, extras from a Tarantino movie. Yeah. Uh, right? But here's the question. When are we going to start going, no, Jimmy, no, Bam, y'all the motherfuckers that's supposed to climb to the mountain and lift us up there? Because at some point, we got to start look. Bam has the I've tool set. At, I, Bam has it. all the tools. Tiff. I had niggas telling me that I was being unreasonable, saying that he should. I understand never Jimmy. Only 10 and 10. Jimmy is, you know, some of his skills aren't as sharp as other, you know, stars in the league. But Bam's. Tiff, as as has there been anybody in, and I'm not in quote unquote heat media as hard on Bam this year as I have. No, like you have I've, been. I've been going after it, and I I love Bam. I believe he deserves that max contract. I believe he has no ceiling. And because I believe those things, I'd be hard on his ass because, like, what are you doing, bro? Yes, thank you. Are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? Like, I, I go after Bam more than anybody has. 
And and for me, the Jimmy thing is really, really hard because he's out, he's in, in the lineup, out right, of the lineup, right. he's injured. You try right. listen, COVID, I, you can't, you know. I literally had to take three days off of work with tendonitis in my toe. You know what I mean? Like, and I sell beauty supplies. So, like, if you got a bum ankle, like, it's hard to be out there, you know, being dominant. So, I, and, and Jimmy, for, and Jimmy, for the most part, this is Jimmy's career. This yep. is who he is. Bam, you have a chance right now to be, I mean, you have to be a looter and a riot for the most, and, and for, for lack of a better term. You have a chance to be super aggressive, super just like I'm taking this shit over, dropping 28 to 30 points a game, 9, 10, 11 rebounds, 6 assists. You have this chance because you're playing with guys like Gabe Vincent, Casey Akpala, Kendrick Nunn. You should be out there putting your head down on the break, getting to the hole instead of slowing up because you see Alex Len. There's a lot of shit that Bam is doing right now that – bothers the fuck out of me but i will also say this about both jimmy and bam you're also being relied on to be the best defenders on your team there, there's no jay crowder here anymore there's yeah. no Derek jones jr here anymore like you're talking about <clears throat> casey akpala and avery bradley's hurt and then you have you you want casey akpala to be your point of attack defender like this team has fucking holes in it and and like and, and you're you're making up for Dragic, Olenek, uh Duncan, Hero, Nun, just a bunch of negative defenders. And then you also want him to go down on the other side. So like I play, you know, there's two sides of this coin right now. Yeah. Like, are we disappointed in their offensive output? Yes. But at the same time, we're asking so much of them because this offseason, the Miami Heat front office. Failed them. Yes. Yep. And until we admit that part, and Jack, I want to go to you next because you're one of the first people that have yep. been on this page with me. You were on here before me that the Miami Heat front office failed their star players this offseason. Yeah, it's not even just – I mean, you're totally right that it's asking Bam to do a lot um, on both ends, and that makes his offensive output kind of suffer. It, but it, it's not even about fairness at some point. It's just about utilizing your talent, right? If you have two of the best defenders in basketball, doesn't it really make zero sense to surround them with no other decent defenders? <laughs> like, you could easily have one of the best defenses in the league, like an incredible historic defense. Like, Bam is an unprecedented defensive talent. Jimmy is one of the baddest, like, dogs that we've ever seen enter this league you could have something really special there and you don't even need to surround them with great defenders you just need to surround them with replacement level defenders guys who will do their fucking job the problem is bam has to do tyler's job and duncan's job and kelly's job he has to do like five jobs on defense and then he has to push the charge on offense where nobody's hitting fu fucking shots around him it's a joke and and you saw what happens tonight when Kelly starts hitting a couple threes. I mean, the offense looks capable again. And now, now you're not so mad at Bam for passing out and doing what he has been taught to and trained to on offense. Um, sorry, Moose, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, to kind of go off of what, uh, what uh, Alf was saying, they only made one move in the offseason that was quote-unquote defensive, and that's Avery Bradley. And listen, I'm an Avery Bradley fan, but – we can't rely on him this year with COVID, with the injuries, I mean, with everything. Uh, so now you're, like we've been saying, you're asking your two best players to not only carry this team defensively and make up for all the shit that the other players are not doing, but then you want them to also bring that same aggression on the offensive side. And this is something that we knew going into this year is going to be a a challenge for the year for Bam. This is something that he has to learn. He has to learn to be aggressive on the offensive side as well. So it's going to be a year-long process. Unfortunately, we just need him to hurry the fuck up on that and continue to do it every <laughs> single night. But and then the Heat are just going to keep losing, and, and that's, that's the problem. And 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 that's where I my biggest problem with the off season is, like you said, they made one move for a point of attack defender. But there's not just that part of it. The other part of it was going into the season 
thinking that the way to get through the regular season was dependent on Goran Dragic and Jimmy Butler to consistently get to the rim and create free up for other guys. And if they couldn't, oh, Tyler Hero was going to take that step. Solana, we saw, we've seen that Tyler Hero has taken a step, but, but he has not taken the step of being your main guard on offense, creating for himself and others. It's funny because as you're saying that, they're showing a Tyler Hero mixtape right now or like montage of all his best plays <laughs> on, a, on Fox Sports Sun. But you're right. You're talking about a drip trap. <laughs> Shout out Delusional 05. Thanks for the subs. By the way, I want to find somebody that believes in me the way Jack believes in Bam and Jimmy because it is just so uh, – <laughs> It was inspirational, was it? it yeah, was. like listening, listening. Bam, yeah, listening He's to the way you talk about them. Like I love Bam and Jimmy. Listening to the way you talk about them just like just calms my heart. Like truly, just right here, <laughs> under under this Gap sweater, Tiff. Right under this Gap sweater, it really calms my heart. The playoffs oh, made a believer sweater. out of me. I don't know something. I had like a religious experience with Jimmy last playoffs. I think we all did a little bit, and then yeah. Bam. I don't know, that jumper coming along so quick, I trust him to yeah. figure out whatever he's got to figure I, out. That's why it sucks so much. Yeah. Like, that's why, and I'm sorry I'm not answering your question, Alf, but that's why it I sucks so much. I question I had. Yeah, something about Tyler Hero, <laughs> but whatever. Um, that's why it sucks so much, right? Like, the other night, and, and it's why I'm being hard on Jimmy. It's why I'm being hard on Bam. I know you all are as well, by the way. Uh, but I truly believe to my core, these guys are in that, that echelon of maybe not tier one, but they're tier two, tier three, whatever. We can have the argument another time. And when you're up by 10 points, you don't lose that game. Like LeBron doesn't lose that game. When you're down by three to the Wizards, you figure out a way or you don't get to a situation where you're down by three to the Wizards. And I don't believe that this team will continue to lose those games. Like they'll figure out ways to win. It's just going to take them some time. Um, They've been in these games. Like they've been in these games against these bad teams. So once Jimmy and Bam figured out they get back to the level they're playing at. I, I, I that's why I'm not panicking. I think they'll be all right. Um, they've been in the, they've been in the game against these bad teams. It just hurts my heart to yeah. hear that. Like, yeah, but Jimmy Jimmy only played in what two of them. But they should um, like, the, like the problem is the bad teams, bad rosters are so much better than our bad teams, bad rosters. Like when once you get beyond like our first seven or eight, like holy shit. The Heat banked on a lot of developmental guys, and that's my biggest problem with the Re- offseason. Remember how good our team was when LeBron didn't play? Like, that was our yeah. big joke to Cleveland. It's like, see, you don't know how to build a squad. Like, our team, we, we played great with LeBron off the floor. And now when Jimmy Cleveland, doesn't play, Gabe him. Vincent's out here <laughs> jacking up Looks 12 bad. shots a game. Okay, but, but also in fairness, when we had LeBron, we also had Hall of Famers taking vet minimum contracts to come play with us. Like, we don't have that going for us right now. Well, so you could have you you got Old Depot for cheap. But Bag of chips. More than, yeah. Bag of they chips. had more than vet minimum money. They had a little more than vet minimum money to work with. Yeah. They could have gotten some guys. I think the Bradley son signing i remember the first thing i said to you alf i i really hated that signing back in the off season i like bradley a lot but that guy was never going to be healthy we all but know he also, wasn't going to be healthy he hasn't been good in like three years like i don't yeah. not really i didn't understand and like i like it like i like every bradley because i i've never seen another player give Dwayne wade more trouble you know what i mean like when when Avery bradley was on his shit like he gave Dwayne a lot of problems um, okay, so before we get out of here, um, let's w- go. We're going to open it up to questions from you guys. So if you guys have any questions, please send them in because we're trying to cut this off in the next five minutes. It's Friday night. Um, I, I've I, had like I, I, 18 Chris shots. Cody. I, I shout have out a- Chris Cody with the drip drop. Oh, shit, oh, man. <laughs> Damn. Thanks, Cody, for supporting the show. It's hard to do the imaging and then pour drinks in. I have a question. <laughs> I got a question. Um, so we won by close close to thirty points. What, like twenty seven points or something like that tonight? Mm-hmm. Are we going to see UD play at all this year? No, ever, like, never. Like a minute. He already did his job the other night. 
<laughs> we won, right? I'm not no, so sure. I don't grass. know if he. Did, I don't know if he did his job, Moose. Because again, I want to. I can't stress this enough. Five wins. Yeah. <laughs> and two yeah. against us. Two, two against, right. And two of them are us. I, this is a shit team. <laughs> And you're right, you're so right. I don't know if that motivational speech happened. So my question is, if you're there, hey, man, if, if fine. If you're going to be doing pep talks, cool. But if you're not going to be doing pep talks, you should be out there when we're up by 25 points with like three, four minutes ago. Do you think UD calls them pep talks? I don't think I don't think he necessarily calls them pep talks. No, I feel like pep doesn't is, in, isn't in UD's <laughs> not, vocabulary. Not vocabulary. Uh-huh. I do like this. I do like this question. Alf, can you cuss out the NBA for playing an all star game and the KD drama tonight? Cheers. And thank you for the bits. Um, The idea of an all star game is so fucking stupid. It's ludicrous. That's a money grab. The NBA is actively trying to kill black people. That's a money (laughs) In Atlanta? (laughs) Yeah, in Atlanta. Like they're going to stay. They're not staying in their hotel rooms. (laughs) <laughs> well, and also, they would never suspect it. What did LeBron say? LeBron said that he could be there physically, but not mentally. But he's not right? there mentally. Right. But it's, my question is, like LeBron, you know what? Maybe don't be there physically. Right. Physically. Don't go. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Go do it. Now they're talking I, about I, an I do it clause. Boycott the ass. So, who is going to show up? It's literally going to be a Ish Smith Garrison Matthews one on one game. Matthews. I think like, who is going? Hopefully, not our people. I think unfortunately you're gonna see some first time all stars really. They're gonna go, yeah. Like I, that. I'd have a hard time. I can believe LeBron not going, but I can't believe like I don't know, like Trey Young not going. LeBron said yeah. he's going, by the way. No, it's not oh, yeah. Trey Young yeah. plays in Atlanta. Right, he's there through. anyway. I meant like <laughs> a Trey Young level player. I just oh. couldn't think of it. <laughs> you gotta remember that the all star game, the the reason the league wants that so much Money. is because they get Huge sponsorship dollars. Money. And you, know, you know, exactly. It, and you know who's pushing for the all-star game? The shoe companies. The shoe companies have shoes. Yeah. That they, I mean, that is like the biggest weekend Hold for on. your hottest, hottest shoes of the year. I, I, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure. And again, if I'm wrong, correct me immediately and I'll shut up. I'm pretty sure I read that the all the money that the NBA is making is going to be donated during the yeah, all-star that's weekend. Bullshit. To where? It's donated right back to their back pocket. Where okay, I, I mean, then then I'm wrong, I, but I I, I no, could have sworn I could have sworn that, I heard that or I, or 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 I said that. So, I mean, and I'm not I'm not justifying yeah. that for an All Star weekend, but yeah. it's not like it's not like you know all these people are just filling their pockets. Like, and again, if I'm wrong, correct me. <laughs> but. That guy's filling his pockets. He <laughs> <laughs> Nine hundred and forty thousand dollars a point, guys. Right with heat bucks. Nine right. million reasons to stand. <laughs> <laughs> Drip drop. Redeemable only in South Florida. Exactly. Heat bucks. <laughs> but seriously, like Shams yesterday tweeted out zero NBA players tested positive for coronavirus. Well, said, no, he said t- positive coronavirus results for NBA in the past four weeks. 16, 11, 1, now zero. Yes. And wouldn't this be a great time to take a fucking break? Congratulations. Right. Let's do the confetti, motherfuckers. We won. We did it. We beat it. In Atlanta. The virus mm. is over. Oh. Atlanta. You mean hot Lanta? Harden is going to gonna put up historic it's numbers. It's going to be lemon year. pepper excuses <laughs> all over the place. I'm nah. And then you have KD in and out of a fucking game tonight. I did like. Wh- they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And Tyler Hero, his girlfriend got a false positive. Like, bro, like. They have KOD without KD. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to treat this shit like freak me. Yes. And that's it. And that's all it's going to take. And every team's going to be quarantined. <laughs> nah, I expect like, them honestly, to do it respectfully. They're going to they gonna test it. Gonna, I think they'll do it respectfully. The all star break in the hotel. In, in a season like. In the hotel, not the league. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. The All Star break during a season like this should have been a, a a perfect time to take a break, reset, let teams get healthy. Yep. You know, it should have been like a fourteen day quarantine type of situation. Like everyone go home, get healthy, spend time with your families, get Absolutely. off the road. They're playing three games in five nights, four games in six nights. 
everyone go home and get healthy for you know for 10 days instead not only that yeah they're saying you go like anywhere you can go you can leave the country they're letting them leave the country yeah Nuts. No, so not the country. No, no, not the country. Con- Hawaii. You, you can go anywhere in the country. Are you sure? U.S. Virgin yes, Islands. Yes, you can do Hawaii. US. Yeah, mm. but still, only okay. Hassan Whiteside is confused by that. He does not understand. How can I stay <laughs> yeah. in the U.S. and still go to Hawaii? I, I wouldn't <laughs> trust them to stay here. Half of them. They can. They got access to everything. You really trust them? Like, oh, I'm not going to the All Star game. I'm going to South Carolina. <laughs> oh, I'm with you, Tip. They hop on that PJ, they go where the hell they want. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and me and Iowa. Right? <laughs> I feel like every... I feel they like... drop their way to Ibiza. <laughs> Wait, was that a drip drop? <laughs> ah, fuck it. I had a shot ready. <laughs> Salah, you gotta take a shot. Yeah, I am. I did find... I just want to correct myself. I know we passed this, but I don't want to sound like a fucking asshole. I just I did find what I read, which was that uh, Chris Paul says that the All Star Game uh, will have a plan to use the game to benefit HBCUs um, in Atlanta oh, and around the country oh. and COVID nineteen relief. So I just want to correct myself. Yeah. Why are we doing this? <laughs> <laughs> they could have just gave money regardless and just yeah, send just people give home. money. Just I, give money I, I, and no, send people I, home. I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't I wasn't defending the All Star Game. I was just simply stating what Chris Paul said. No, we so. know we're not we're not we're not yelling at you. We just I, yelling at black stuff. Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing because a we elected sweater, Kamala so Harris. I, we're having right, an All Star right, Game, right? Like, what? what? <laughs> the Stacey Abrams first annual what All Star Game. <laughs> she tossing up the ball. <laughs> The We Love Black People All Star Game. <laughs> Fuck you. Let us go home. Siobhan, <laughs> <laughs> the ball gonna have a fist on it. <laughs> the ball. The-